Mr. Lewis, thanks for coming in this morning. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I want to talk to you first about just who you are for people who may not be familiar with Fonzie Lewis. Super. I am Fonzie Lewis. I was born and raised here in Horry County. I've been here 58 years and proud to call this home. Uh, I've, I retired after 30 years in the corporate world uh, with U.S. Foods. And during those 30 years, I've traveled all over the United States uh, from state to state uh, doing uh, leads up into the jobs. Um, and also, I have a family business that I have here in Horry County. I've had that business for 28 years. And um, I was raised and born on the farm in Baybor. Okay. So you are, uh, you're familiar with the area, you're familiar with the county, and you're familiar with what's really affecting the county right now. One of the big issues that everybody seems to have on the tip of their tongue when you say what's the big issue are jobs and bringing jobs to Horry County. What would you do as chairman to work to bring more employment opportunities for the people who live here? Well, as you know, a small business is the backbone of the country, and it's true here in Horry County also. And we need government to work with the small businesses, not only the businesses, but individuals, and make a partner with them, make things easier so that they can move forward. We have the ITAP part, which is uh, we just a few ma miles down from Boeing in, in Charleston. That could is 450 acre park. We have so much room for growth there. Uh, we have an aging population here, so we need to look at taking care of our aging population, bring in medical services, and move forward in that area. So, th because South Carolina is rated like number seven in the states uh, for retirement. So that would be great to have something to do with medical care for our retirees. Tom Rice, the, who held the Horry County Council Chair position until he went on to become the 7th Congressional District's first congressman, he really pushed the Myrtle Beach Economic Development Corporation and went, went about to kind of restructure that as part of his couple years in office. Would you continue working with them? Do you think that they're doing a good job? I think they were doing a good job and can do a better job. I think not only uh, in that area, our elected officials need to do a better job. Uh, we have a railroad that hadn't been up and going for some time. That railroad needs to, to uh, be busy dropping uh, supplies to our local businesses here. So yes, I, would, I think they've done a good job and would continue that. Another concern a lot of people who live in Horry County have, of course, is getting around Horry County. You had to drive on 501 today. In fact, you own a business on 501, and you know the 501 can be a parking lot a lot of the year. What would you do to alleviate some of the, pr some of the congestion on 501, particularly during those peak summer months? Well, 501 has been overlooked too long. It's been put on the back burner. Uh, we've had ride one, ride two, and uh, just like uh, the the Anner overpass, which is a good overpass, it's a nice looking road. Everything was done uh, looks just great, but that wasn't needed in Anner at this time. That should have been at the Carolina Forest area to keep from having congestion, to keep the traffic flowing. We could use over, uh, more overpasses there at 22 comes into 501, and we could have a lot more uh, access lanes added to 501. So 501 is the main concern of roads at this time. We are uh, looking at 73. 73s we've been trying to get 73 for years but 73 is put that on we not not do away with it but put it on the back burner we have inter interstate 20 was supposed to come to myrtle beach all along it didn't make it but we got interstate 20 interstate 95 right at our back door we could take the existing 22 upgrade it carry it right on into 20 and have an interstate here in no time we could take 31, upgrade it, tie it into 74, have two interstates here for the price of one and have it here in no time. Well, and you kind of stole one of my questions, which was what would you do from a local level to get Interstate 73 going? And, and to be fair, I think any Horry County Council politician would want to say that getting an interstate just from 95 to the beach is the most important exactly. part. Exactly, most important part. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we've messed around with, with 73, let's look at something else. Let's move forward. And, and it would be, from what I understand, it would be a lot less miles, a lot less money, a lot less environmental issues, wetlands. So let's move forward in another direction. I-73 can still stay here. We're going to need it eventually, but 
let's get something we can move on faster. How about the Southern Evacuation Lifeline? That lifeline is very much needed. Yes, that, that would be a priority also. And it's in the state's hands, but it seems like the state is, is pretty slow as far as doing something about international drive. Would you, would you do anything to put pressure on the state to get international drive going out to Highway 90, and how about Postal Way while we're at it? Once again, I think that's where our local officials are not doing the job that they need to do. Uh, they, our local, I'm not putting our local officials down. They just need to work harder. They need to go out there and beat that drum and say, hey, we need this. If you look around, look around the state, look at the money that Charleston got for for their major bridge. Uh, look at the money they're getting for for the dredging that we desperately need in Georgetown. So they need to get out there and beat the drums and say, Horry well, County's got to have this. We, we're not getting our fair share. All right. The last question I have for you, and take the time you need to tell me why I should vote for you. That could take all day. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, to be quite honest with you, uh, in my life, 18 years ago, they gave me six months to live. And from that 18 uh, years ago, uh, they, they told me I had idiopathic cardiomyopathy. And, and from that day on, I've put God in my life first, family, and then work. And that's how, that's how I approach every day. And I want to see that this county moves forward. Uh, I've had several calls. I've had three calls just today that uh, uh, we have 298,000 registered, uh, not registered, but residents approximately in this county. We have 173,000 registered voters. I had calls today saying I can't vote for you because I'm a Democrat. But that's not so. This election is open to all people. Even though it's, uh, even though it's a uh, Republican primary, everyone can vote in this primary. So people are being misled. I don't know from what point or who or, or where this is taking place, but everybody can vote in this election. It's an open election. And so I want to educate the people not only on that, but I want to keep the people informed as to what's taking place in the county. Uh, I'm just the average person, and the average people don't understand what's taking place, even though it's on TV. If elected, I will put public input back at the front of the uh, agenda. If elected, I will see, th like the school district, move the council meetings around some. It doesn't have to be in the ca uh, chambers all the time. Let's work with the people, because they are the ones that's going to put us in office. So their needs needs to be looked at. So vote for Fonzie Lewis one on March the 12th. Okay, and on March the 5th, tune into WPD News Channel 15 to watch a debate between the five candidates.